Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Tank Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful ship from the Steam Workshop. And if you've heard about the name Bruce Liedel, well, you know he builds some amazing things. In the past we've taken a look at his walkers, his robots, his wacky little creations, and they're all quite spectacular. So what has he brought for us today? Well, this is the Muntjac. It is a crawler tank type APC exploration vehicle. It is quite beautiful. Well, let's have a look around the exterior and then we'll pop inside, see what the interior is all about and we'll take it for a bit of an off-road driving course. So first off, you'll notice it has four separate tracks and these are all controlled by the W, A and D sort of modification. So it means we can turn them just by pressing the keyboard rather than having to manually turn them with a whole hoodicky of rotors and random buttons. So that just makes things a lot faster. And what's great about this is since the tracks are separate, we have a better ground clearance in the center, meaning we can clear larger objects without getting stuck belly up on them. So coming from the front of our little crawler, we have the lower access door. So this lower access door just opens up. If I spawn my character in here at the front, I'll quickly show you that. So we pop this button down, if we can reach it with my small legged character, maybe it's like four foot. So you can see he's actually opened up the door and we have access to the interior. But what I really like about the front of this ship is how it's layered back. So we've got this interior area where the cockpit is locked down that's heavily protected. It's got these armor reinforced blocks that just look really sort of meaty and it takes that sci-fi feel to a next level. Up at the side here, we've got ourselves a little spotlight on a rotor. We've also got a camera mounted to that as well, so we could do a little bit of observation if we wish. And as it comes back, we can see how it's strapped down into these little areas with this sort of reinforcement ribs and a little bit of red lighting going through them vents. And we've got two turrets to sort of deter any sort of aggravated attack, maybe by a passing scavenger or whatnot. In the center, we've obviously got the ore detector. We've got ourselves a beacon and the antenna as well. And what I really like about this is how he's mounted this laser antenna on the top here. So you can imagine it gives a really good sort of observation view of the area, just what you need when you're trying to explore new territories. Now, coming to the side here, we've got these sort of, I guess these may be mud guards or something, or maybe some sort of pad where you can put extra sort of baggage or whatnot for your long exploration hauls. But then we work our way to the back. And what's great about the back is we have deployable spotlights so we can see what we're doing at night. And we can also have this deployable section here, a little bit like the shuttle, the space shuttle. This opens out and you've got a deployable ship in the center. But enough of all the yapping, let's get inside and see how this thing functions. So as we walk in, we're greeted with the important areas of any exploration vehicle. Of course, a toilet and an endless sort of sink. I'm not too sure what this is supposed to replicate. Maybe some toilet roll. Who knows? As we come up to this side, we have a sort of cooking stove. So you could fry up your space beans, maybe after a long adventure or took into a nice MRE. We've got like a sink maybe over there and a load of random buttons because it's very important to have like lots of random televisions on your ship. So as we come back into this area, we have the project projection room. That actually launches a 3D projection of the ship so you can see what's damaged. The hull integrity is quietly 100, uh, terminal integrity is 87, and we've also got our location and projection performance. So I'm guessing he's maybe mentioning it, that it will affect the performance of your game if you leave it on. So we can also sit there and just view that, maybe do a little bit of analysis of the ship as we're going through an area. So over here we have the bedding, and what I originally thought was some sort of test area where you put your beaker, it's actually just two beds bunked on top of each other, so you'd slide in here if you in reality could do. But what's also quite cool about this bed, he's got a little bit of a telly there at the end, so you can do a little bit of um, vlogging at the end of the day or whatnot. But let's continue going through the ship. So as we go into this area, we have the emergency power block at the left there that we can access. And we also have the area at the back. So I'm just going to access my third person camera. And we'll bring that to the outside. We'll open the cargo bay doors. So you can see how they open up. A little like the space shuttle. And what's really cool about this next bit. So you're working at night. You can press this. And it will deploy these lights out the top like that. So you can see exactly what you're working on. Just a great little idea. You can see how that illuminates that whole area. So let's actually pack this ship up and get it moving. So back to F6. We'll close off the spotlights and we'll close up the door. So you can see all that folds away into that very nice compact package. And let's go to the front of the ship. We'll close up the door because that's important. We don't want any sort of space animals gathering up inside. And we can pop into the cockpit that's just above. So the vehicle itself, the tracks allow us great turning. So you can see WS and D allowing me to turn the tracks 
opposite of each other. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of um, a three-point turn here and we'll try out some of that various terrain. Um, because my feeling is if you get a tank, it needs to be able to deal with the various sort of off-road terrain. If it can't go anywhere but flat, you may as well just have a rover because a rover is going to be a lot faster. The, the maximum sort of speed when I was testing this was around six um, meters a second. So it's not super fast, but let's have a look. So we've just got some small blumps here just to see if we can do that. But I think it'll absolutely murder. Tracks are great for getting over any sort of off-terrain like that. So you can see how the one's flexing up, one's flexing down. And we've just managed to climb over that terrain easy. So we've got something a little bit harder coming up. You can see how this goes a lot steeper straight away. So we'll realign the tracks. And we'll try not to get too angled on this because we are on a little bit of a slope here. So we might slide down. So we're going to go out with maximum sort of speed. So that right track's up, left track's up and over, perfect. So if this was a voxel sort of terrain, this is what I, I kind of designed it for, to see if it could crawl over the voxel type terrain. Oh god, this is where we might have an issue if it gets stuck, that rear track on that boulder that's sticking out. But it looks like we've managed to navigate around it and over the top of it. Beautiful. A great little tractor vehicle. Now, could we test this a little bit more? I think the one weakness of this will be its weight and its mass trying to get itself up a hill. But I'll move it down into that valley there and we'll try getting up the other side if we can. Right, so we're at the top of the valley now. So the first little test is to see if it will be able to accelerate down the slope. Well, well, we'll try to be a little bit careful with it. But you can see in a lot of this voxel terrain in Space Engineers, when you get to the edge of a slope, you get a lot of sort of weird voxely parts kicking up. So we'll see if we can navigate down and the tracks will have enough sort of rotation to get us up and out of that dip. So let's just be careful here. And you can see there's a little bit of divot in the terrain there. So we'll bring ourselves to a slow. The tracks will allow us to slow down quite a lot. But we don't really want to be sliding like we're doing. So let's um, just give it a little bit of gas so our tracks continue moving. Hopefully nothing breaks off at the moment in time. Okay, the tracks have flexed back up and we're still going on. What's our meters a second? So we've just beat our sort of descent speed. Has anything been broken in that little bit of... No, everything's working. Perfect. Right, so we've got the challenge now of getting out of this gully. And as a more realistic test, I'm actually going to turn it up to the left here and just go out the small area there because I know it won't be able to handle a much larger sort of descent. So this is going to be quite a challenging one I think so let's actually do a three point turn here and try to go up that smooth part of the terrain just to see if it can handle a little hill like that because if it can't handle a little hill like that we know we're in deep trouble already so we've got a little bit of off-roadness to do let's try turn off our hood so we get a little bit of a better perspective so you can see the tracks actually flexing up will we have enough power to actually get up the hill that's the question though so we're actually getting quite a steep angle going on now we're still maintaining grip we've lo we're losing grip now we're actually sliding to the side, so we can't make out a small sort of climb like that, but still, that's quite a steep climb for an off-road vehicle of this size. So let's try going up a little bit of an easier area. I think that bit on the left there looks a little bit easier, so we'll see if we can climb out of that. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to have to de 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 sort of deploy the scout in the back and see if we can actually get some help, maybe some vehicle to tow us out of the, the sort of situation we've got ourselves in. So this is a little less steep. We're coming at it at an angle as well. So let's give it maximum power. Let's see what's happening there. Our speed is is maintaining around two and a half. No, it's dropping now. So it looks like we're stuck in that gully. But I still think this is an issue more with space engineers than the vehicles itself. Like how slippy this terrain is. Like there's not enough friction between the two surfaces to actually get up. Something that I hope they address in the future. But anyway, let's deploy our little scout vehicle. Let's bring it back down onto the flat land behind us. And we'll see if we can actually deploy that out. So there we go. Stop the vehicle about there. Bring that to a stop, pop ourselves out, move to our rear area here. We've got an emergency since we're stuck. Uh, we're going to open the cargo bay. We don't really need the spotlights for this situation. Uh, we'll access our little fighter and we'll see which button our um, sort of blocks are on. So we didn't have to disable our conveyor belt underneath. Instead of disable it, I think I was just going to do the easy option and just cut it away because why not? I've got our cameras all the way up over here. Because I thought there'd be a button on the tab, but maybe you have to go actually into the thing. But there might be multiple connectors, so we'll just do it the easy way. It's probably a much simpler way. So now we just need to power up the craft. So, engine's on. Uh, let's deploy the thrusters, perhaps. Have we got any thrust aboard? No. Oh, God. Yes, that was one way of doing it, but we've not actually got engines on. Our, our little pods have flicked out to the side, but we've not got any power. So we need to work out power. Okay, that's is that our power systems? Yes, it is. So five was to access our power. So now we can go and scout for help. It's quite a cool little vehicle, this, how it deploys itself like that. Can we deploy it back in? Oh, it deploys in two modes. That's so cool. I like how it compacts in for storage, but it's still able to fly. So let's deploy it out into that mode. And we can travel a little bit faster. Very nice design disease. 
Very nice design indeed. Make sure you check this out on the workshop and I will see you next time.